today we are going to take this, we're going to turn it into this. I got a lot of requests on um, Reddit to do a video on how this is done. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to establish is what you're doing, and I'm going to do these scales, right? and I'm going to do these ones on my little leak. So I need to make sure I get a container that has a loop that's big enough to fit, you know, of course, each side of scales in there. All right, other things you'll need is PPE, uh, some good rubber gloves, and a good uh, mask. N95 would even work. Uh, it's just ammonia stinks. Well, it'll put you on your butt. Um, you'll need paper towels. You're going to need coarse sea salt. Uh, this is the clear ammonia. This uh, acrylic lacquer crystal clear gloss. So you'll need that stuff. Okay, and if you're cleaning your copper, because you need to clean the original patina off before you put the force patina on, uh, you can use this method, which is the method I use that seems to work really well. Um, you just need some flour, uh, you need a bowl, you need some distilled white vinegar, and some salt. And then I use gloves because I hate vinegar. I hate the way it smells. And last but certainly not least, hair dryer. And we will get to that right now. So when you have to take your knife apart, because essentially the, what you're going to do is you're going to take everything off and you're just going to have the copper scale. When you do that, you're going to have to take out all these T6s. Uh, if you've never taken apart knives before, know that T6s are notorious for stripping, simply because they are so small and the, uh, the bit for it, of course, is also very small. And let's see if I can even get the camera to kind of pick up how to see. It's so small, um, it, it, it's just tiny, right? And so those can strip very easily. I would highly, highly, highly suggest getting, uh, ooh, there we go, the Wea brand uh, bits um, and screwdrivers. And honestly, I have had way better luck with their screwdrivers than with their bits. And one thing I've learned is that if you want to take these off and not have them strip ever, use your hair dryer and heat up your knife. What you're gonna do is you're gonna heat up that Loctite that they use on their screws, at least Kershaw does. And you're going to uh, be able to take these out without stripping them out. So I'm going to heat this up. All you do is just warm it up. You don't have to melt it down. You're not trying to melt. There is plastic on here. So you don't wanna melt any plastic or warp any you know, plastic pieces that may potentially be on your knife. But you just wanna heat it up to where the Loctite softens enough to where these screws come right out. So this is why you need a hair dryer and you should heat up your knives before you take them apart. So as you can see, this one has got, this is off the Natrix XL. This is one of the T6s. It's got a bit of the blue or white or whatever uh, Loctite. Fair enough, I heated it up. It came out relatively simple, no problem. However, when I went to take out the pivot screw, as you can see, somebody evil at the place decided to use, use red thread lock. As you can see at the top, it's kind of gummed up up there. Red thread lock. Red thread lock is basically made to be unbreakable <laughs> or extremely hard to break. So when you buy thread locker, you always want to use this. Blue 242. It's removable. That's the thing. It holds good, but a little torque and it comes off. Okay. So one thing I would suggest investing in is one of these trays. Uh, you can get these off the internet for like 15 bucks or something like that. Uh, I got this one from Night Joy, but you can find them all over the place. Uh, anyways, uh, I would also suggest when you take apart a knife for the first time, you lay it out in a way that makes sense to you so that you can easily figure out what screws and what pieces go to what. This is also a good time to clean everything up inside, so I'd also suggest investing in some kind of uh, lubricants. I got a nano oil here. Um, if you have any type of rust or anything you wanna get rid of or any polishing, I'd suggest flits. Um, I would also suggest, where do I have it here? Oh, right here. I would also suggest microfiber cloths. Um, they don't leave lint or residue behind, so when you're uh, wiping all this stuff down to, to re-lube it, you don't have to worry about getting little fibers cotton fibers or anything in it. I'm gonna go ahead and mix up my uh, little cleaning solution for these two. And then these look okay. I don't think they're too bad. So what you gotta do is you gotta get the flour, put it in a bowl, just a little, doesn't matter. What we're doing is we're making a paste. Making a paste. So the, take your uh, vinegar, pour some vinegar in there. 
Remember, you're just making a paste. God, I hate the smell of vinegar. And then you take your salt, doesn't matter which one. I like fine grain, fine grit salt because, oops, I take the glove off to turn this. Um, I like the fine grit just because it's kind of works better. But what you're doing is you're, it's an abrasive. That's all you're doing. You're just using salt as an abrasive. So mix the salt and vinegar in there. And then it doesn't matter. I can just take my finger and just kind of mix it up. And you're going to take your copper, copper piece. You're going to take this paste. You're going to put some paste on it. Rub it on. Look at that. Look at that. In seconds. I mean, seconds. See the difference? Just a few seconds of rubbing. Rub it on here, get more on there, take more of the goop glob, just rub it on there, rub, rub, rub. Like that, turn on some water, take these, rinse them off, and there you go. I don't know how that angle is, but <laughs> as you can see, much better. All right, and there you have them. Those are pretty clean, not bad. Um, they're much more to the original color, as you can see. Okay, guys, once again, I'd like to apologize for A, the camera quality. I don't have a camera stand or anything. I'm literally propping up my iPhone onto different objects to make an angle that makes sense. And B, I live next to a gun range. So in the background, for the remainder of this video, you're probably gonna hear gunshots in the, in the background. Um, so, uh, just don't be alarmed. <laughs> I just live near a gun range. It's the only way I could afford my house. Um, okay, so now we're out in the garage. You want to be in a well-ventilated area for this because this is when the nasty stuff starts. So as you can see, I've got these. I kind of put a polish on the uh, parts right here, but I left the uh, stone wash on the insides here. I kind of did that on purpose for a couple reasons. One, I want to see uh, if there's a difference in the quality of the shipwrecking um, comparatively. And two, I'm hoping that there will just be less shipwrecking under here. I, it's a bummer that it gets so beautiful under here and then you cover it up with a pocket clip. Now you don't have to, but it's just a personal preference. Got the container. I've got my scales. You want to get paper towels. You just want to wad some up for the scales to kind of sit on. Next. I need my uh, PPE, put this on. I hope you guys can hear me. I'm gonna try to speak up. All right, so got this. Now you wanna take your ammonia and kind of just saturate the paper towel. Take your sea salt. I take the sprinkly in. Okay, so now I got the salt in there. I'm gonna take my scales, I'm gonna place them upside down. It's not pretty, it's not, it, it, it's garage science. All right, so we're gonna set that scale there. We're gonna set this one here. I'm gonna set this one upside down here. We're gonna take this one, we're gonna set it upside down right here. We're gonna take our lid. We're gonna set our lid on. And seal it up. It is 2.15, 2.14 in the afternoon. We're going to check on these at 10.15. Okay, it's the next day. I came out here last night to check on them, and they were not quite ready, so I decided to leave them in overnight. Let's see how it looks. It's not bad. I know it doesn't look like a whole lot now, but that'll actually turn out really well. So that's good. Those look good. Ah, oh, yeah, see? That's kind of what I was hoping for, more of that. These look great. So I'll just set it right here for now. That one's beautiful. Ah, oh, yeah, this one's really weird looking. So I know it doesn't look like much now, but let me get them all kind of cleaned up and we'll... Interesting. So these ones turned out well. 
they, they will have to clean get them cleaned up this little guy needs a little bit more time Okay, and so here's the results. I am so just happy with how they came out because they came out so, they always come out so different and these are no exception. So what happened was I went and checked on them last night at about 10 p.m. and they just, they, they didn't patina enough that I was happy with, so I just left them in there overnight. And when I checked on them this morning, these three looked absolutely great the way they do now. Actually, they looked more like this one, but once it dries, it looks like this. But this guy didn't want to patina. Um, he was still real shiny with just a few spots. So I put him in the container by itself and left it there for the day. So it is now about 3.30 in the afternoon the following day. So he's been in there for probably 24 25 hours yeah about 25 hours and sometimes that's just gonna happen some scales will get super uh, patinaed in six hours my benchmade scales that are almost completely blue they were only in there for six hours and sometimes they're in there for 26 hours and that's as that's what you're gonna get now I could have left it in there longer that's that's the thing uh, I could have completely left those in there even longer but I think this is going to be great because what I like is I like to have a mixture between a shiny copper and the patina. So when it's all said and done and, and you put your clear coat on, that shininess really makes the patina just kind of pop. I, it just looks great, in, in, especially in direct sunlight. So that's where I'm at right now with those. Once it's all dry, I'll come back out here and I'll show you how I easily uh, hit it with the clear coat. See, this is what I did on my Benchmade where I left some of the copper exposed and shiny and in the light it just looks so nice you just have this nice reflective copper underneath a very patina top layer so now that they've all dried up and got cleaned up as you can see looks really good I'm really excited to see how this is gonna turn out the blue started to come out and all the different textures and everything so now we're gonna do some clear coating and this is a process that I like to spend a little bit of time on uh, because you can really kind of ruin your piece if you get too crazy with the uh, clear coat. Okay, like I'm probably 12 inches away. I'm gonna just slightly there we go. Now I will let that sit let those dry and then we'll come back and check on them and see how they look. Okay, so it is 7.40 in the morning on day three, basically. Yesterday was applying the clear coats and then letting them dry. And these are the results. And I am blown away. They, I am so glad we made these. They look so incredible. The uh, patina came out so well. Um, the different depths of texturing and colors is just mind-blowing. Now, there's, a, of course, a few spots, because I'm not perfect, um, where, you know, I might have, there might have been a grain of salt that was left on the, as I sprayed the clear coat. And we'll see how it looks. I'll remove it. <clears throat> and uh, if I, I'll apply another thin layer clear coat if I need to, but wow especially the leak scales. I mean, that is insane, that pattern and just the, the little swirl patterns like in the copper there. It's just, wow, I wasn't too sure about these. Uh, but now that I've finished them up, I think they look fantastic. I'm so glad we made these together. These are so cool. So now I'm going to um, get some finishing touches, get them on the knives and show you what they look like completed. And now they are completed, all put back together. Now I'm gonna hang them up and I'll let them cure for a couple more days and they will be ready to go. They just turned out absolutely fantastic. I love them. I think they look great. So yeah, let me know what you think.